Here's another project for all you puzzle fans out there. It's a variation on a disassembly classic, but like our other projects for puzzles, when you print your own, the skill is putting it together, not taking it apart. Stick around to see the mysteries of the universe revealed, and as a special treat, 3D printing allows us to print off a cross-section of the mechanism so you can see exactly how it works. Printable Science presents a 3D printed disassembly puzzle, the Celtic Knot and Cross. So here's the Celtic Knot and Cross in its assembled position. The challenge is to uh, free the cross from the knot so that you're left with three pieces. Well, before we try and take it apart, let's try and put it together. We printed our parts in PLA for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, two perimeters, three bottom layers and top layers, a 20% infill, and a 0.2 millimeter layer height. As you can see, we printed the cross in grey and the knot in an olive green as an aesthetic nod to our Celtic design. There's just a few other parts and an optional stand that we printed in black. Now for each puzzle you assemble, you'll also need four BBs. And you can pick up a pack of those for a couple of dollars. Not a pack as big as this, but that'll give you more than enough than you need. You'll also need to cut four lengths of one quarter inch diameter steel rod. It would be nice if we could print the rods, but the mechanics of the puzzle's design really call for, for rods that have more mass than a plastic uh, rod would give us. So we need to cut four pieces 15 millimeters long, and to help you with that, we provided a, a little cutting jig. You just slip the rod into uh, the jig, fasten it in place with the bolt, and then cut the rod using the, jaw, the uh, jigs and a crosscut knockout as a guide. Now, if you've got a hacksaw, you can use that, or you can print off your own mini hacksaw handle and uh, use that as well. Uh, there's a link to that project right there. You can make incredibly light work of cutting the rod if you have a high-speed uh, cutting tool like a Dremel and a cutting wheel, and we've supplied a, a smaller jig for that so that the uh, jig doesn't intrude uh, too much uh, on the clearance required by the, by the cutting wheel. If you are using a Dremel, go slow. If you don't, the steel rod will heat up too much and melt the plastic of the jig. Once you've cut your rod pieces, you'll want to test them in one of the cross halves. You'll note that the cross half has two different diameters of holes, a large one and a smaller one. The technique for inserting a rod is to slip it into the large hole until you create enough clearance to slide it back into the small hole. Now what we're looking for here is to make sure that the rod is flush with the interior edge of the cross. If it sticks out at all, then it will make assembly of the puzzle impossible. You should also try and keep from making it too short, because it may not let the puzzle operate as well as you would like. But all things considered, better a bit shorter than too long. If your pieces are a little long, you can sand or file them down to size, and we've included a, another little jig for that. You don't have to uh, try and hold the short little piece uh, with your finger. You can uh, just, uh, uh, when you drag it over a sandpaper or a file, just slip it into the hole of uh, the circular sanding jig. That will leave a short length of the, the rod exposed and you can sand or file to your heart's content. So uh, after you've filed it a few times, you just insert it back into uh, uh, one of the uh, cross halves and check for fit. And as you can see, that's still uh, a little too far, so we'll need to sand that some more. Once you've trimmed your four rod pieces, and this is very important, set them aside and first insert a BB into each hole of the cross half. If you don't do that, you won't be able to assemble your puzzle properly or at all. Now make sure that the notch is facing upward. Once the BBs are installed, then insert one of the rod pieces into the smaller diameter hole of the cross half, and then insert the, the other rod piece into the larger diameter piece of the rod half. Finally, take the round plug and insert it over the rod that's already in place and slide it into the larger hole of uh, the cross piece and push it down until it's flush. 
Now we designed the plug to be a friction fit, so you might have to use some force to fit it properly into the hole. So why the hot plug? The plug gives us the clearance to insert a rod that's longer than the uh, notch uh, of, the, uh, of the cross half. Once assembled, that, that extra length or that extra clearance provided by the large hole uh, prevents uh, the rod from falling up, getting lost and making the puzzle practically useless. Okay, time for a spoiler break. With the two assembled cross halves and the knot, you're ready to assemble the puzzle so it looks like this. If you don't want to see how it's done, you'll want to pause the video or skip over to the end of the spoiler break. Before I show you how to assemble the puzzle, let me uh, show you how the mechanics of this thing work using a half printed cross piece. As you can see, there's a channel in from the notch and at the end of that there's a, another channel perpendicular to the first. We'll call that short channel the well. When we assembled the puzzle, first thing we did was uh, put a BB in the channel. And it can rest in two positions. When the notch is uh, pointing down, the BB rests in the extreme position of the channel. And when the notch of the cross is pointing up, the BB rests in the well. Now when the BB is in the channel, it prevents the rod from getting fully inserted. So it sticks out. But if you flip the notch, the BB drops into the well and the rod can be pushed all the way in. So the trick to assembly and disassembly of the puzzle is to make sure the BB is in the well so that the rod can be pushed flush with the notch face. When all the rods are flush, it's easy to slip the two parts of the rod together. But if you shake things up a bit, that allows the BBs to get into the main channel, which pushes the rod outward slightly, and that forces it into the center hole of the other cross piece so that it can no longer be disassembled. Well, that's half the solution, because while we have our cross assembled, it's also supposed to be locked inside the knot. Well, that's fairly simple. All you have to do is take one half of the cross and make sure the rods are flush with the notch edge and slide it in diagonally halfway through, or just a little bit past halfway through. And then take uh, the other half cross piece and making sure the rods are flush with the notch edges in that one, turn it so the notch is facing downward and slide it in diagonally into the knot as well, allowing it to pass through the notch of the piece that's already in position. Then it slides down and the tolerances are such that there's just enough room for the second cross half to slide into the notch of the first cross half. When the two notches are aligned, push the second piece down through the notch into the first piece and finally give it a shake. Your puzzle is now in presentation mode and it'll be somebody else's job to take it apart. Do you need to see how to take it apart? Time for a second spoiler break. To solve this puzzle, turn it so that the cross is parallel to the ground and then spin it. This accomplishes two things and it does it with the help of centrifugal force. Spinning the puzzle pushes the BB and the rods out from the center of the puzzle. For the cross half that currently has the notch pointing downward, this causes the BB to fall into the well and then the centrifugal force still acting pushes the rod out so that it is flush with the edge of the notch and gives you the clearance you require. Now we're not quite done. We have to carefully flip the puzzle so that the position of the cross halves is reversed. If we don't do this carefully, then we could jog the rods that we separated in the earlier step so that they move back into a locking position. Now we spin the puzzle again. This has no effect on the bottom cross half and the rods are already in position and the centrifugal force will simply keep them where they want them. But for the top piece, once again, the BBs move to the end of the channel and drop into the well and the longer rods move to the very end of the channel. At this point, all four rods should be in their extreme position and you should be able to lift the top cross half from the bottom and then slide it out of the knot. Voila! All your problems are solved. 
Well, we hope you and your friends enjoy this puzzle and that it puts your 3D printer to good use making stocking stuffers and useful little gifts that demonstrate just some of the utility of a 3D printer. Thanks for watching. And won't you help by becoming an important part of the Printable Science family and making this channel more valuable and successful? You can help us out by taking the time to watch this video in its entirety and other Printable Science videos as well, perhaps while your 3D printer is printing off this project. You can leave comments and questions below. That will help us to continue to create useful videos and 3D STL files that are printer ready and allow you to maximize the power and utility of your 3D printer. Your feedback is very important. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button and if you have just a moment, won't you show your support by clicking, clicking the subscribe button below. If you want to make sure you don't miss our upcoming videos on 3D printing, you'll want to click on the notify bell as well and please consider supporting Printable Science on Patreon using the link supplied below. You can become one of our Patreon supporters for as little as a dollar a month and it will provide you with lots of extras and additional information as well as going a long way to defray the cost of making these files and videos. Down below, you'll also find a link where you can download a copy of the STL files from Thingiverse so that you can make your own 3D printed Celtic knot and cross puzzle. As always, you can download a copy of the STL files for this and other projects directly from our website. The latest files and a discussion board on our 3D puzzles and the Celtic knot and cross in particular are available at the printablescience.com website where all the science that fits, we print.